Welcome to SpiceWorks Administrator course on our jobskillshare.org site. And in this video, we are going back to our initial setup for SpiceWorks. So um, you'll click on SpiceWorks Administrator. And in last video, we have set up our lab, which is, um, you know, setting up the Active Directory. And that's how in a real environment, you're going to be working on some type of Active Directory type of environment where everything is connected to the domain controller we have done that we have did the setup today we are going to actually install spiceworks but before doing this i would like to share one document with you guys and that's something i am going to put it in this unit section and that will be the document uh, right here okay so this is the document and i'm going to credit it because it's not from my, I did not make this document. I'm going to credit whoever posted this. I just tweaked it a little bit. So it says Spikes Wars. There's an introduction. There's what cap capabilities of this, you know, inventory, of course, scanning systems. What type of scan does it use? What type of, you know, other like, you know, tasks that it can create, access management, task creation, automatic collections of inventory data. Uh, it can create reports. Uh, it can track non-network devices, it can track the warranties, it can track the storage, alerts, monitoring network devices, analyze bandwidth and all of that stuff. You guys can go through it like this. And then it basically talks about the architecture, what is the application based on, the type of databases it use, the network, the type of ports and stuff that it use. Um, challenges, you have some challenges in here, data integrity, um, they basically keep everything secure even though there's ads, but those ads are not like your normal um, Google type of ads, they're just basically, you know, very uh, specific uh, ads that the company choose and pick it and then they target their own users. Then the main thing about this is that you have to go through your own requirements and that is something you need to make sure you do that before you do anything in production. And this is the link that I'm going to share with you guys and website blocked. Well, my software is going crazy because I know it's not uh, site, it's just the way I configured it. So this is the imp most important thing you know you have to do in any type of system admin level applications you really need to go through the the requirements because you could miss something or it could have a warning that if you do something like this meaning any software that just do network scanning and if you have some kind of monitoring set on your devices by another company or your manager I can guarantee you they will get a notification that you're trying to scan the system and they will track your IP address like in seconds and come back to you and say hey what are you what are you running that is scanning all of our systems number one number two a very very important thing that some devices do not like SSH login and that could be either by by design that they they don't like it or maybe someone put uh, a security features that if someone try to SSH into this meaning SSH into a devices that are not known or not configured it will shut down the system meaning for security purposes or this, there could be a flaw meaning if there's a switch or a router and there's some kind of hardware issue or some update mess, uh, messed it up and you're trying to SSH from Spiceworks to those devices it could actually bring the whole network down so you really really need to make sure you don't just go around and just put this in, in a production environment and start scanning systems that was my warning to you guys and now we can go start our practice now of course you're going to go through all of this documentation yourself just look at what systems you're using but we're going to keep it very um kind of you know that that relates to your job environment because that's why we have a domain controller running here and then we have a one pc that is going to be a system administrator pc usually you don't install spike source on a domain controller now in our lab we have only one domain controller you could have multiple but sometimes people would just bring another server for spiceworks like another um, windows 2012 server and it depends people don't want to spend license because it's a free software so they might not even prefer that they might just go for something else we have a windows 7 machine and we're going to install spiceworks on this machine so let's get started so the first thing i would like to do is to install spiceworks so i'm going to the website 
and I am going to install SpikeSword. And another thing is that I am logged in as a system administrator account that we created in our last video. And this account have all the access. All right. So let's go ahead and start our installation. We're first going to google.com and okay, it's okay. We're going to do SpikeSworks. When you type SpikeSworks, you're going to click on download. And now what we are going to do is to download 7.5. And you can check the release notes if you want to know what's changed in 7.5. I am going to do uh, click download, download file here. Let's see if I can make it a little so that it doesn't confuse you guys. So in the back we have a domain controller and in the right here this one is our uh, Windows 7 machine. And let's see if we can do a scale mode. Um, Alright, let's do this one. Oop, that's the only scale that I get. Okay. Maybe I need to do the, there's actually a way to make it really big. Um, there you go. Okay, so because this Internet Explorer is too old, I will you have to use some type of trick. So let's see if we can, it's saying that it's a, Okay, both are not going through because of my network. Um, okay, let's play around with this level. This is a good troubleshooting right here. How do I download another browser? Okay, let's try this. Firefox. Firefox.org. Oh, it's already downloaded. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save. This is this. This only happens when you have like a virtual machine and you have uh, things not set up um, on the network and it's not up to date. Like I just installed this Windows 7 um, ISO from like, you know, 10 years old ISO. So, of course, they're not going to have any updates or things like that. But all I care about is downloading Spiceworks. So once this is done, uh, we're going to start uh, running our Spiceworks. Of course, in a real-world environment, you will have your Windows up to date. You'll have all the service pack ready, and just run updates. Just go to start and just type updates and just uh, you know make it update. I would prefer another browser also. Just put like a Chrome or Firefox because it makes it easier. Uh, sometimes if you have issues with Internet Explorer or running Spikesworks, um, issues like that can be also resolved by just putting a different browser. Another thing about Spiceworks is that we want to do a good testing. So let's go ahead and uh, turn on our Windows 10 machine also. So we're going to have one Windows 2012 machine, Windows 7 machine, and Windows 10 machine. Because when it starts doing inventory and finding out these machines, you'll find uh, it will be nice that in our lab environment we'll have different systems to play around with. All right, our installation is done. So what we're going to do is run Spiceworks and click yes. Extracting file. All right, you can use whatever port you want to use. I'm going to keep it 80. So sometimes if you have another web browser, uh, web server running on your system and they're using 80, then you need to make sure you change it from 80 to a different uh, port. Um, they usually have default ports. Another one is like 96, 75, something like that. Uh, you can search about that. What port is the best port in the search? Um, so you guys can use also that. And we'll find that out later on in this course also. Nmap and WinCap, basically WinPCap, both both are um, required. Uh, basically, you can not use some of these, but then you will uh, you will not have a good uh, you know speed or uh, discovery methods that it use. You probably will miss some features in there, and it, that explains it right here. Also, optional components. Now these are the things that 
will try to scan your systems and do a lot of things. So make sure that it, this is being approved by your managers or whoever's uh, you know in charge of your network. So we're going to click Next and click Install. So right now, Spiceworks is getting installed. And while Spiceworks is getting installed, what you should do is to you should go to your CMD, um, go to Star, type CMD, and then type IP config, and then you should see what network you're on. So then you can do your testing. So remember, we did 10.0.2.15. This is the network that we are going to scan. Now, in most companies in a real-world environment, you probably will have something like 10.0. Uh, 2.15 and then, then you'll probably have 10.0.1 or then 10.0.3 you'll have a lot of like that you know or 172.17. whatever 172.16. whatever so you'll probably have different uh, subnets and networks going on like this and this is where you just need to know that stuff and then you can just put it on like you know some kind of word document and then you can add it to your scanning all right, so we're done. We're going to click on continue and our Spiceworks is actually installed. That's how easy it is to install Spiceworks. Okay, so there you go. Our Spiceworks is getting started right now. It's heating up. And while that's happening, I wanted to actually see if I can get to a different browser, but that's fine. We can just play around with this for now. And I will get uh, another browser just to make it quicker. I know this is old, so if I go to like about, yeah, that is old. Look at that, Internet Explorer 8. We're going to definitely have some issues. But let's see, let it run for now, and we're going to get uh, another browser, either by like, you know, some type of portable browser, or uh, I need to just put an um, installer in there because I'm having trouble getting to these uh, HTTPS sites on this old machine, virtual machine. There you go. And it even tells you right there that, uh, yeah, what's happening? And, you know, we went ahead and stopped supporting Internet, blah, blah, blah. And then there you go. You you have your message right there. I mean, it's good that it I kind of came across this because a lot of people, if they were doing this and they said they didn't get this message, you're going to have a lot of issues running Spiceworks. So they gave you the message right there, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can upgrade your browser right there. So... Now, another step is to, you can upgrade your browser, or you can just, you know, go to remove this and enter again. And it won't let you do this, it won't let you go um, ahead, you know. So what we need to do is, and you can see in the background there is a username and password thing, but it's not supported. So the best thing is to, for now, just don't mess with it. Just go ahead and um, upgrade your browser. So you can do is upgrade Internet Explorer. I can do that right now, or I can get another browser. Now I'm going to get another browser. This part that I'm doing may not apply to you. Maybe you already have a new system and you probably won't even see this message, but it's good that you, you're seeing this for a troubleshooting purpose. So you can either ignore this forwarded and start with when I get the new browser. So I'm going to go ahead and get to the new machine, which is another updated machine that I have here and it's connected to it's on the domain so I'm going to go ahead and log in and in this basically I'm going to download Firefox share it and then I can get to that uh, share from that machine and I'll run that uh, Firefox because right now I can spend time and try to fix that other issue but um, I just want to get this going because I know you're not going to be the, the if you are going to be seeing that issue You definitely need to upgrade your system as you can see. This is a new system. It's upgraded uh, And I see no issues and that Windows 7 ISO is very very old So the best thing for you is to upgrade your system and you will not see that issue So right now I'm just waiting for this to come up and I just need to get the share going so I can get the all right, I'm going to pause this. Don't want to spend time on this. All right, so on this new machine, I'm going to create a new folder. That is if you are following my setup exactly and you're getting the same errors, then this is what you can do. I'm going to go to Edge, open that, and I'm going to go to Google. And 
in here I will type Firefox download and go ahead and download click on download and free download click here make it faster we've downloads here we're gonna go ahead and open the file right here I already downloaded it like twice I guess yep so I'm just gonna move it to this folder which is called apps I'm gonna right click on it go to properties and here I'm going to go to security sorry sharing advanced sharing and advanced sharing I'm gonna click on this checkbox and permissions I'm gonna give it to everyone because it's a testing lab I don't care about the permissions so I'm just gonna click apply OK and close it now I'm gonna go back to my Windows 7 and I'm going to go to search 10. Dot, and I know that P address of that machine is 10.0.2.9. There you go. When I do slash, I go to apps. And now I can get to my Firefox. I'm going to double click on it and run. And now I should have a brand new Firefox um, getting installed right now. So then I am not dealing with any browser issues at this point. There you go. The back one is the old one. And you saw the message and let's go ahead uh, since I'm a very lazy person I'm gonna copy this that is the heights of laziness so there you go we're just waiting for it to install alright so we have our Firefox installed do not import anything make it quicker and now we have our spice work should be running with no issues so let's go ahead and I'm going to paste that link. You can just type your IP address or local host in there. And now it should start the wizard with no issues. So there you go. First login came up. It is asking, do you already have an account? If you don't have an account, you need to make an account, uh, need an account. And you just type your information in there. And then here I'm going to use my account information and just log into Spikesworks for the first time. There you go guys, so once you type your information and if you already have an account, just put that uh, email and password. If you don't, just make another account and it will take you to this uh, page. And now, this is it for this video. We have con uh, successfully installed Spikesworks. It's running. Now, the next videos, we are going to jump into specific sections for Spikesworks. For example, let me just show you guys what we are going to cover next time like for example we have done the setup everything done in next video we are going to actually do uh, you know that IP addresses we are going to put it in the, the settings and then we will scan our system and that's inventory so it will basically go out and find computers devices switches whatever you have and then it will tell you oh we found this now of course you need to be a system administrator to do this so that's what we're going to discuss next time thank you for watching this video make sure you be a part of this jobsclashare.org platform and also like this video